Hey, Bar Committee, Jeff back again, and it is VCLT time. I received some VCLT from a great person in the vinyl community that I'm sure most all of you are fans of. Uh, the other day, Alex from Beer and Vinyl reached out to me actually through Instagram and said, Hey, I bought a bunch of records that, you know, just a bunch of random records. And he said, I got one in here and I thought of you. I wanted to know if you wanted it. And I'm discussed it and I'm like, sure, I've heard of it, but didn't know much about it. But I'm like, yeah, that'd be a novelty. Um, I had mentioned when I did his uh, contest entry that, that we had also talked about and he was coming to like within 40 minutes of here. He had to come down for work and unfortunately it was a weekend. Everything was screwed up and I didn't get to meet with him. So that would have been fun. But so I said, I wrote him back and said, yeah, sure. You know, I'd be interested if you're willing to, if you want to get rid of it, send it. Um, after he mailed it, <laughs> he said, oh, I also have this album, which sounds like it's something up your alley. And I'm like, oh, yes, I like them. I know them. He said, dang it. I wish I'd have known that before I shipped it. But he went ahead and shipped the second shipment. So anyway, let's check it out. Probably nobody knows about this. Sons of Thunder. They are listed as a gospel album. It's from the 70s, uh, 72 or 3. Now, the interesting, it says it's listed as a gospel album. Now, I think that's an erroneous listing on discogs they are literally a rock folk rock pop rock um they do a cover of the doobie brothers jesus just all right but you know i think a lot of times when people post albums like this on discogs anything that has a christian message becomes gospel or people try to choose the religious tag as if there's such a thing as religious music i mean there may be religious lyrics but music can't be religious and the only way and this is just a gripe that I have to fight, fight to fix all the time. On Discogs, the only way you can choose a religious tag is if you first choose, it's a subcategory under non-music. Because according to the guidelines, if you have a speaking album or CD where it's somebody like talking or preaching or teaching something religious, it's a non-music religious thing. So what these people are doing is they choose non-music, they choose religious, they unchoose non-music and religious stays there. I'm all the time having to correct those. People do that all the time. That's how this one was. It was considered gospel religious. And I'm like, not only is it not religious musically, that tag is strictly dealing with music, but it's also not gospel style wise. It is literally pop rock. And so, yeah, it's 70s pop rock you maybe maybe mean a small acidic flair that you would have had back this like type stuff back in the days and not not totally so i guess pop um anyway the interesting thing i found out about it i'm sorry for that rant it is sons of thunder live at virginia beach i live in virginia beach i thought that's really cool uh it was recorded at a place that i don't think exists anymore it also came with a promo pack which he said the promo pack is from uh, Capital University and Columbus Tech, and he says, which is, I guess, around where he's at, and he says, that's probably why he had the album, is because somebody in his area uh, received this. It must have been something that was being done with this album that was promoted it back in the day through the school there, and so it's got all these cool flyers and bios and stuff like that. The album is, like, near mint, so obviously it didn't get played a lot. Uh, it's on a little, 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 little known label at all. There is a version that's white, and then there's a version that is red. But it's still the cover is just a stamp. It's just a rubber stamp, and um, and then the the album labels it's a rubber stamp too. So it's almost kind of like a promo. There's nothing on the back at all. Um, but anyway, it was neat. I listened to it. And, you know, yeah, that's cool. It's it's '70s pop rock, maybe a little folkish pop rock in there. So it's not gospel. So that was cool. And I'm like, yeah, take it. Great. Um, and then this is the one that he came with coming up, Eating the Doll. I have a lot of their stuff on digital. I might have, uh, I used to have some CDs by them. Um, I never see them in the wild. This is on Refuge Records, which is, of course, a U.S. label. They're mainly a, what are they, Sweet, Swedish band. And this is the American release of this album, Alibi. And like I said, I've had, I've had copies of this for a while. So I thought, yeah, I'd like to get this. Some of these guys uh, have gotten back and done a new project that I showed probably about a year ago that I bought on CD called Yarm. It's got some guys. It seems like in Sweden, there's only a handful of different musicians and they pop up on all kinds of stuff together. But yeah, so Eden the Doll, I was like, yeah, I'll take that. So that was the other one he was going to send me. But then he threw in some stuff. 
and maybe he hasn't noticed because I don't talk about it a ton, but I do talk about it occasionally. He said everybody has to have a little you know, jazz fusion. So Brand X Moroccan Roll. Moroccan Roll. And this has, of course, Phil Collin on, Collins on it on drums. And so, yes, now I listen to a lot of jazz. I have shown a lot of jazz, but I don't show about it as enough, enough to where maybe everybody knows. I do tend to gravitate more towards, because when I cut my teeth on jazz, it was... It was contemporary jazz of the mid to late 80s. I literally cut my teeth on things like Kenny G. That was one of the first ones. Spira Gyra, Billy Cobham. Those are the ones I talk about all the time. So I'm not opposed to jazz. I like jazz. I will admit I don't like improv jazz. I will admit I'm not a big fan of certain types of classic jazz where it's just chaos, improv. And fusion I have some of, because when I got into Billy Cobham in the mid-80s, he was contemporary jazz. But I have most all of his early collection from the 70s, and it's pretty much all fusion. So I have gotten used to that. And this is along that line. Uh, experimental and fusion. So I have no problem with this in my collection. I do enjoy jazz. And the other one he threw out here is the Brecker Brothers Band. And that is this is more of a horn-based jazz. See, there's a trumpet on there. I will say that a good majority of my stuff tends to be sax, woodwind-type stuff. Uh, and or um, just full band. Well, even even Spire Jarrett is sax driven. Um, I have some Chuck Mangione. I have some trumpet stuff. So I'm not opposed to any of that stuff. Uh, so yeah. So this was a cool. I listened to this too, and I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of stuff I like. It's it's upbeat, not very improv-y and not very fusiony to where it's right in that sweet spot that I really like. So not opposed to this at all. Glad to take them off your hands. Glad to accept them. Thank you so much. Check out Alex's channel. I'll link to it below for sure. But like I said, you probably know him because he's he's been around now for a year. That's what the contest was. Um, and so definitely check that out if you haven't already. And I will see you later. Rock on and rock hard.